is it weird to think that practice pads are sexy? It's weird, It's I agree, it's weird. But still, you have to admit that when you see a pad, you just get kind of excited like, ooh, that thing holds the key to me getting better. So let me just put it out there right now before any questions show up about like, hey, how do you like the reflex pad? And what's the best practice pad in the world? I will tell you right now what the best practice pad in the world is. It's whichever one causes you to practice, whichever one you use. If it's an old school pad that your grandfather gave you and that makes you excited to practice because of the nostalgia and the vibes that it gives you, then that's the best practice pad in the world. If it's the side of your shoe because it's bouncy and it's rubber and you can't afford a practice pad, then that's the best practice pad in the world. If it's a pillow because you read in some random article 10 years ago that some pro drummer that you look up to practiced on a pillow, then do that. The best practice pad in the world is the one that you practice on. <laughs> Why am I treating you guys like you're my child and you're about to start drumming and I'm like, let me tell you about practice pads, son. But I really do mean it. The pad itself is less important than the effort you're putting into the pad. That being said, let's go jump on the pad so I can teach you this exercise. All right, boys and girls, let's dive straight into this exercise. This is an extremely simple exercise. That doesn't make it easy, but it is very simple to understand and I use it all the time and it is going to help you out a ton. So here we go. Four hits with the right hand, felt as eighth notes. One and two and, not too bad. Followed by four with the left hand. Three and four and Juno. What was that all about? What was that all about? Who are you barking at? Who are you barking at? You're not like single stroke roll exercises. They're tough, they're tough. Say hi to all the YouTubers, they're right there. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna go back to work now, okay? You good? Okay, I love you too. All right, like I was saying, one and two and three and four and then you're gonna do those same four hits with the right hand but put the left hand in between them. So then you get one E and a, two E and a, and then four more with the right hand, three and four and. So the whole exercise goes like this. One and two and three and four and one E and a, two E and a, three and four. Boop, what just happened? We ended with the right, so now we start the whole exercise over with the left. And this is one of those classic teacher-student exercises that I'm always talking to you about, which is do something with the right hand lead and really absorb it and think about how it feels because that's gonna be super natural for you if you're right-handed. Obviously, reverse that if you're left-handed. But that feeling that you're getting of confidence of like, I got this, then do that whole thing over again, left-hand lead, and feel that student going like, uh, teacher, a little help here, and you can start to learn from your dominant hand. You good? You need to go lay down. Juno, you gotta go lay down. Try not to knock over the expensive cameras. Love you. So getting used to that feeling of right hand lead, everything feels good, super comfortable, then you switch over to left hand lead and it's not so comfortable and you can learn from your dominant hand, that is a very good thing. Now you should always ask, whether it's me or your private teacher or whatever, you should always ask, why am I doing this? What is the purpose of this exercise? Is it just because you needed something new to film for Instagram or YouTube? This exercise is something that I use for myself and it's something that helps me with my singles. Now, building up a single stroke roll is a skill for sure, but a lot of times people do what I just did, which is they start kind of slow and then they build it up. Well, that's pretty rare that you would ever need that. A lot of times what happens is you're drumming and you're playing something kind of up-tempo and then out of nowhere, you gotta play some quick singles. So this exercise helps me make the transition into those singles by having one and two and three and four and 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 and those left hand lead singles, those are biscuits, buttercups, and blueberry pies. But sometimes you go around the kitchen and then two kicks and you're like, well, I'm out of drums, so I guess I'll come back this way, left hand lead. And that is a great skill to have. So let's work on this nice and slow. Remember, one and two and three and four and one and a two. And shake it to boop! One, two, and three, and four, and one E and a two E and a three and four. And let's give it a go. Starting tempo 100 BPM. Now don't play just because you heard a metronome. You gotta subdivide first, get it inside you, make sure you feel the rhythm of one and two and three and four and one E and a two E and a three and four. And really own that before you start to make some noise. All right, here we go. Let's do it together. One, two, ready. One and two and three and four and one E and a two E and a three and four and left hand lead three and four and one E and a two E and a three and four and Don't 
Don't forget to breathe. Now, a couple things before we move on. Make sure when you're practicing, you're envisioning yourself playing this on a snare drum. And I mean that as far as dynamics and volume. I see a lot of people do pad stuff, whether it be on Instagram or on YouTube, and they're literally just and I'm like, oh my God, you would deafen your neighboring city if you played a drum that hard. So make sure you're thinking about it. Now, obviously, if you're a rock drummer, hey, swing for the fences. But if you're somebody that's trying to be dynamic and have somebody be able to stand within 100 yards of your drum set and enjoy the sound without earplugs, and maybe bring it down a little bit. So this is not gonna be what you want. Unless you have a cheesy tattoo from the early 2000s, then maybe that is what you want. All right, now let's give it a shot at our goal tempo of 200 BPM. I'm gonna leave the metronome at 100 BPM and just play it in double time. That gives you a much more relaxed feeling instead of having that metronome be like, one, two, three, four, come on, you gotta go, you gotta go, you gotta go. All right, once again, make sure you can subdivide this thing. Can you sing this? This thing is moving, here we go. One, two, ready, go. Now look, I wish I could pretend that like, oh, that was super easy. I don't know what the problem is, just do it. That wasn't easy. And you could definitely hear in there, at least I could hear, my left hand is struggling way more on those singles than my right hand. But that's what makes it a good exercise. If I have it mastered, I don't need it anymore. And if you have it mastered, then you don't need this anymore. But if you notice that all of a sudden you go, dun 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 cool, sweet. Yeah. Well, then you've got some work to do on those left hand lead singles. And this exercise, what it does is it helps you jump into them rather than saying like, okay, I'm gonna work on my left hand lead singles. Okay, here we go. By now, you've probably switched to right hand lead singles in your mind and you don't even know it yet. And that is a great exercise for building up your raw speed, but this one is much more practical to what's gonna happen back there. All right, YouTubers, so have fun with this one. And if you're able to reach the goal tempo of 200, please film it and tag me in one of your stories on Instagram. I would love to see that. And if you get a chance, check out the new podcast with me and Eddie Thrower. Bye, guys.